Today marks day one of the seven day phone free challenge. And before I dive in, I want to just tell you guys why I'm doing it and share some anticipated challenges. Um, so I think the first reason I, I decided to do this is because I just got back from a three day trip in Miami with, and it was really, really nice. But um, I'm actually not somebody that's like very connected to their phone. Like I don't know why, I just felt addicted to Instagram and addicted to my phone in general. Like my brain was so conditioned to want more information. Just don't like that feeling. I'd like to break that a little bit because how much more time could be better used and brain energy better spent doing other things. And so that's definitely reason number one, break that addiction to my phone um, in general. Number two is to just be more productive this week. Um, I read a quote last night right before I went to bed that I thought really hit home with why I'm doing this. And this, it said, the grass is greener where you water it. And I found myself over the holidays, I think it's pretty normal, just itching for more, whether it was more things or more vacations or when we're on the vacation doing something else. I just couldn't sit still um, internally and actually physically. And so I want to just take time to, to water this grass, to take really good care of what's going on around me because the reality is that's all I have. So I can watch what everybody else is doing on Instagram and it's easy to just get caught up in these internal feelings. So this week I'm watering my own grass and right now just feels like a really perfect seven day hiatus. Anticipated challenges, number one is, I guess, you know, checking the time. The gym, I was kind of sad about that one because I like the headphones for Spotify, but I'm going to bring headphones to the gym, but plug them into the TV and just watch that and bring a book or a podcast. Oh no, I can't do a podcast. Okay, second biggest challenge would be calling an Uber or a car. Um, hmm, what other expected challenges? It all seems pretty easy now. Some things that are making this a little bit easier um, that are, are going to allow my life to continue that I am doing that you should know about are I'm using my computer and I'm using other tech a camera or two to record these videos each day um, I'm using my computer for my emails of course I am going to use my computer for video conferencing calls that I have see this is a very unique time in my life to be able to do this um, as on the whim as I am for a couple of reasons. Um, number one is I work from home. This is the biggest reason. So I don't have to travel. I don't have children. Some expected benefits. I am really looking forward to my productivity enhancing. I'm really excited about just being present. Um, I think that I'm going to feel really grounded. I'm really good in who I am and what I want 2019 to look like in terms of work, in terms of relationships, in terms of boundaries in my life with people uh the phone is kind of one of those things you don't it's not a door it's not a door you can open or close so if you've got somebody in your life that if you hypothetically have someone in your life if you have people in your life that are make you emotional or they're triggersome which i do and i never know when they're going to be triggersome is the thing because it could just be at any time i could open my phone and see a text message that just totally derails me or an email that just derails me and if I'm being really honest, that is what happened on New Year's Eve. Um, I wrote an email wishing somebody a happy new year and I got a not so nice response back. And that's okay. People are people. But I just felt like, wow, my, I'm not safe. I'm not protected by what I've created. And I want to create seven days where I, I guess, Ultimately, seven days where I'm in control of the information that's coming at me. Um, like I said, I'm still using my computer, so I'm still going to be at seeing information. But the amount of information that comes through us on the phone, whether it be social media, from text, from whatever, are, it's just a lot. And I just want to be really clear on what I allow, what I need, what serves me, and what I can let go. First insight would be um, really hard to know the time. So especially when I'm not in my apartment or on my computer, I have no idea what time it is. First challenge that I've now anticipated that I thought I had figured out was the gym. So I went to the gym and I normally use a earbuds that connect to my phone, couldn't do that. But I know that my gym has a little plug-in for watching TV. I brought cord uh, headphones with a cord down with me only to go and plug it in and realize that the outlet that I have doesn't match the outlet 
on the TV. So they have the, I didn't even think to look at that. Head definitely, you know, didn't work out as hard. Music definitely helps me get into it and dance and move my body. And I just had therapy, which I did through my computer, through FaceTime audio, which was nice and just kind of telling my therapist about what I'm doing, I realized how important this work is going to be for deciding the type of boundaries that I want to have in 2019. I really think that this is going to help me develop systems of how to best do my work, how to best use technology, how to best communicate with others to be the most productive. I also have realized that I turn to my cell phone for these blank moments all of the time. So if I'm running to the bathroom, I usually grab my phone just to, you know, check a text message. Um, so I kind of feel empty handed when I work, walk to the bathroom now. Sort of having that blankness keeps my head on straight and reminds me sort of like stay on task, doing one thing at a time. I always thought that I could do two things at once, but sort of reflecting backwards, I realized that if I try and do two things, I forget what the first thing was. So I'm definitely more intentional already. So really liking this. I feel like I'm sort of stranded on an island. And it's really fun writing emails too. We'll see how the rest of the day goes. A physical therapist wants me to be lying on a foam roller for 20 minutes a day. Kind of just letting my shoulder blades open since they are so concave when I'm on my computer all day. So normally I don't have time for this, but I've got some time on my side since I haven't been giving it to my cell phone today. So I have spent a lot of time at the computer and this is starting to feel real good and I'm enjoying having some extra time to myself. I use Fiesta Dim. Mm -hmm. Look at my good vlogging camera. Um, saw this on somebody's story and we wanted to try it. So the ingredients are water, cashews, potatoes. Um, everything's organic by the way. Uh, so we're gonna try it with some Siete. Um, okay. What do you think? Chips are good. Oh. Range fries, yeah. Might need to be heated up. What do you think? It's good. It's good? Yeah. She's like nacho cheese. And today was pretty different than the first day. Definitely wasn't reaching for it as much. When I went to the bathroom, we're in between tasks. Today just felt overall a lot less depend. Um, finishing up yesterday was pretty cool because um, during the time I was at the gym I actually started a book that was in the morning and at the end of the day after dinner it was already 8 30 or 9 or so when I normally would either sit on the couch watch TV hold my phone or do whatever I just finished that book. Definitely more productive when it comes to doing things for me. I do miss just little interactions throughout the day with friends and colleagues that I normally have but overall I still feel really good end of day three tomorrow's day four which is kind of crazy because that's gonna be that's going to mean that I'm more than halfway through which seems just almost too easy. There was about one moment today that I really wanted to just pick up my phone. I was dealing with something on the computer that went wrong and I had to talk to my brother and he's like, just pick up the phone. I can't hear you. And I'm like, I have to use FaceTime audio on my computer. And he's like, why? You know, obviously he's my big brother. So he thinks everything I do is stupid. Um, so he called me Amish. All things you really learn that they can wait and they're not so urgent. Last night, something really cool happened. My boyfriend Evan was home for about an hour or so. And he was like, wow, you're just a lot more enjoyable to be around today. What What's different? He's like, I don't know. You're just kind of like softer. Your energy's a little bit different. You're definitely not complaining as much and as much funny, right? But I don't know. You know, one of the reasons I did this was because I was complaining a lot more than I like to complain. I don't really like to complain at all. I like to be grateful for what I have. And whether it was really outward complaints like, you know, really obvious whining or just kind of just not being okay with what was happening in that moment, always wanting the next moment to happen. That was one of the reasons that I did this and I didn't even notice that it was sort of unraveling and I'm coming back to baseline, but really cool that Evan did. 
that definitely tells me that this was extremely needed for me. I actually don't even really want to go back to using my phone as much. A little bit of anxiety, admittedly, that, you know, social media is falling apart, I'm not relevant, things are happening, but that it, this actually just feels so right. I'm really confident that when I do come back to social media, I'll have a lot more to say and be able to help people more. I think this is the perfect time to reset. So tomorrow's gonna be Saturday, which means I'm gonna have a lot more downtime. So I'm curious if I'm going to be more like fiddling my thumb or if it'll just be the same as it's been these last. <gasps> hey fam, we are back with day five of, day five? No, that's not right. That's not right. Um, day four, I think. Yeah, we're on day four with just a little more feedback from Evan. He said that um, I'm more introspective without my phone and calmer. I'd say the major thing that I'm missing is just talking to my friends. Um, I've been emailing with a couple of friends and that's been really nice. It's kind of just exciting when you see a new email from a friend and you get to find out what their day is like. That's been most exciting. Um, today was kind of funny because we went to Lululemon in Georgetown where I got this hat and the girl in front of me turned around she's like, oh, I know you from Instagram and I'm like, oh, my old life when I had a cell phone. <laughs> but I think I'm going to be integrating this into my life maybe one day a week or so just because it makes me so much more productive and grounded. With the realization that social media just isn't everything. So. Today hits day five of cell phone free life and it was a Sunday and I read a second book. So, so far in five days I've read two books. I've also been extremely productive with work. So I feel like I'm kind of just gaining time back. Pretty much no idea what time it is at any point of the day. Um, other technology has kind of led the way and made that a little bit easier. So Google Home, if we didn't have that, I'd be very confused as to what time it is always. So I just say, hey Google, what time is it? 9.31. So yeah, she's pretty much my girlfriend now. Um, Evan, do you think I've been productive? I think you've been very productive reading a book a day. I'm very proud of you. And you said I was introspective yesterday. Yeah. Do you want to say hi to anyone? Okay, Evan doesn't want to say hi. <laughs> Evan's also addicted to his cell phone. I've realized that, yeah. but... You know, he's sort of my connection to the outside world at this point, so I can't really, you know, give him any. I'll try to do a 12-hour detox one day. You want to do a 12-hour detox? One day. I feel like it's almost harder to do short periods of time and easier when you just kind of, like, let go completely. So, I don't know. I'd be curious to see if you would do it. Tomorrow will be day six. I'm kind of sad because it's coming to an end, which means reality soon. We'll have to figure out a way to implement this into everyday life. Hey guys, it is day six of my phone free challenge, which is absolutely insane. So I'm pretty nervous about Wednesday, my first day back. And I think that I need to have some sort of a plan of action to ease back in. I think that I, if I just wake up and open my phone um, or go on Instagram or whatever, I'll just have a total panic attacks. In order to be most productive and bring my phone back in, I need to have at least a half to a full day's work in before I bring it back. So I think this is going to end up being a seven and a half day challenge, believe it or not. Um, yesterday after I filmed my day five video um, was a Sunday night and we got in bed and I just feel, felt so filled with um, gratitude. and one way to be more grateful other than of course not comparing your lives to other people all day all day long like we do on social media is just getting space back in your mind when you get space back in your mind not even from a comparison thing but when you just have more room in your mind you're coming up with new thoughts and it's less incoming information actually is a good way to put it and so as a result more outcoming information is happening right so you're developing so many more new thoughts. Uh, normally when I get in bed, I, I try to, you know, put my cell phone down, but I don't usually just pause and like look around. And I just thought, wow, like I love my life right now. It's just good. Um, and it wasn't forceful having to, you know, what am I grateful for today? It was just this outpouring feeling of this is really good. So that was pretty profound. Just that idea of if, 
of how much information we have coming at us all day. If it's not on our cell phone, it's on the internet, um, or even just information from just talking to people. Just, you know, we hear so many different things. It doesn't give us a lot of time to just come up with brand new, unprovoked thoughts. Um, and I loved the peaceful feeling of just going to sleep on a Sunday night, not panicked, feeling really grounded and calm. Um, and I'd really like to somehow preserve that moving forward. Today on day six, I also had my biggest obstacle yet. Um, and it was one of these situations where if I had my cell phone, I would have saved a lot of time and headache, but uh, I was insistent on not messing this up. I've come too far. And it really wasn't an option, honestly, to grab my cell phone, but I was having a computer issue and I was talking to customer support via chat. A woman was like, can I just call you? And I was like, um, well, you could call me on FaceTime audio or through Google Hangout. And she's like, yeah, we don't have those. It's just a landline. And I'm like, ah, sorry. I'm like, my phone's in service. Like I couldn't even say, you know, go through with what I'm doing. Cause if she knew my phone was just sitting in the drawer in the room over, she would have thought I was a total idiot. Um, but anyway, the whole thing took like three or four hours of chat and it probably could have at least been an hour or two of fixing. So I did lose time and the cell phone would have definitely helped that. Um, I did just go to dinner with a very old friend, um, somebody that went to West Point. So he was in the army. He's still in the army actually. And he recently lost um, his college roommate. So his friend from West Point in Afghanistan. And he's here for the burial. Of course, that's, you know, something that makes me feel something inside, but I just really appreciated that, you know, even though it's a school night during the week and, you know, I've got my pressures of wanting to be in bed early and prepare for tomorrow and everything, like if I had my phone, I just wouldn't have been as present for that. I would have been looking at the phone, worrying about it, you know, looking over at Evan because I know he's got a big day at work tomorrow and just kind of freaking out about the time. So I think just being able to show up for people and not have our cell phone around and I wasn't even itching for it either which is cool being on day six it's not like oh I'm out where's my cell phone um I think it's just a really cool way to be able to show up for people and be extra present and it's not just for the other person you get more out of it too so after not seeing a very old friend for a while somebody that definitely you know needed another human to just be present for them I think that that was really helpful all right we are on day seven of my phone free challenge day Frickin set. I haven't even touched it since I tossed it into my cabinet uh, seven days ago. I think it's still there. I haven't even gone to check in on it. All of the feels right now. I am freaking out honestly because when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to reach for my phone or at least I'll have the opportunity to reach for my phone and meaning this challenge is complete. So I've been waking up right now from Google Home. So before I get in bed, I say, hey Google, can you set the alarm for Da, da, da and then it wakes me up and I roll out of bed and I do my thing so tomorrow I have the opportunity to of course do that again um, and I'm kind of just figuring out what to do I had another nightmare that I opened my phone and nothing was there meaning nobody texted me and nobody was writing me messages on Instagram and it's kind of fascinating how much is sort of going on subconsciously right now um, I never thought that I wouldn't be ready to go back to cell phone life. I thought that I would be too ready to go back to cell phone life and really itching for it. Uh, so this last week has been really, really powerful. Um, there's a few things that have really stood out to me this week. Number one is productivity. For as long as I can remember, I've been doing three or four things at once. I think I got my first cell phone in seventh grade and I remember being on my phone, which was like a QWERTY keyboard, by the way, or not a QWERTY, like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that's not right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dial pad and just knowing how to do it. I had my keyboard and I was doing homework at the same time or sometimes even on the phone. Um, and so I'm pretty good at multitasking, better than a lot of people I know who are older than me and I didn't grow up multitasking, but try. But at the same time, nobody's good at multitasking. You're just one of those projects is getting compromised. So, or one of those things you're doing is just, you're not, you can't be fully present on three things while you're doing, you can be fully present on three things, right? You, like, you gotta choose one and focus on that. Second thing has been my relationship. It's been really nice. I feel like the best way to put it is this week we've been the best of friends we've ever been. 
and it's not that we, you know, fight or, I mean, of course we bicker normally, but, and of course we bicker this week too. It's not like that changed, but there was just something very different this week where we, I just felt very, I, I think Evan felt it too, but I just felt very unified and as a team. And it was really interesting because when I kind of to toyed with the idea of doing this, which was, um, I believe in the morning of January 1st when we woke up, I kind of said it out loud, but I was kind of testing him because sometimes he has really strong opinions about things that I do. They usually soften with time, especially if it's something that I'm going to do anyway. But I was kind of just wanted to hear what he had to say, you know, because he has to contact me a bunch of times throughout the day. I have to contact him. And so it would be something that affects us um, in terms of how quickly we can communicate. So yeah, he's just been so supportive and going so far as to say I'm so proud of you and mentioning differences that he sees. I was surprised that I didn't need my cell phone for more. So I kind of feel like when I have my cell phone, I'm always turning to it to check the weather, to update the news, to get information of some sort. Like, oh, I heard something on the news. I want to learn more about it. Maybe even I'll pick up my phone and put it into Google and learn the latest. Or I'm doing a recipe and I want to, you know, figure out something really quick, a conversion, I'll grab my cell phone. And I didn't have many moments where I felt like I needed my cell phone. I use my computer a lot to communicate. I did use FaceTime on my computer. I use FaceTime audio, which is pretty much just a, a cell phone. The communication that would happen during email was so much more powerful. I definitely felt so much more in control of my time. I like social media. I think that I have a healthy relationship to it most of the time, but I think that all of us could definitely take a step back um, from all media, not just social media. So I love my Instagram community. If you're watching this and you're part of it, you guys are a huge part of my happiness. I'm like tearing up actually because it's true. Um, before you guys, I mean, you know, what makes people feel good? It's people that build you up, listen to what you have to say, care about your message, don't necessarily always agree with me. And that's the coolest part about my audience on, on Instagram mostly is like they know that I'm here to have a conversation, not just talk at them, but they also know when to cheer me up. How many times in my life before social media or before social media was what it is now that I just felt like lonely or like nobody wanted, needed my message, I should say. And so I'm validated so many points throughout the day by my audience. And that's not to say that I'm validated by my social media following because those are different things. With that being said, it's very common for myself and content creators of the like to fuse themselves with the number of followers or engagement or whatever. Um, especially when we work with brands and brands are evaluating our worth, meaning how much they'll pay us based on those numbers. So it's really hard to detach yourself, but sort of stepping back this week, having zero followers, if you will, um, made me realize that life can be really sweet should this all fall apart. Um, life can be amazing should it all fall apart. And, and that provided me, believe it or not, with a lot of safety. I don't want it to fall apart. Um, I, wanna, I, I want to continue to grow my online business. I've got really big plans for 2019 that are going to take my online business to the next level, but most importantly, take my audience to the next level, which is like the coolest thing ever. Um, but it's cool to know that I am somebody if there is not all of that. Even if nobody thinks I'm valuable, I know I'm valuable. And that's incredibly valuable for my self-worth, my confidence, and just my happiness, which is my overall thing I'm trying to protect at all time. Doesn't mean I'm always gonna be happy, but unnecessary pain is something that I'd say I try to avoid. I think I'm gonna have to wait till the middle of the day to turn it on and check it out after I've gotten a big portion of work done because I just assume, and I could be wrong, that nobody that I'm gonna have a lot of messages to answer, text messages, and um, things on social media. I could be totally wrong, and nobody's there, <laughs> um, which would be fine too. Like I said, you know, like you gotta, you gotta be okay with with yourself. And if that's the case, that's the case. I've got plenty that love me that may not have been necessarily texting me, but it's been a journey. Thanks for letting me document it each day. And I will see you guys tomorrow.